Well, hello, everyone. I am so excited because we are starting a whole new month. It's April now, and April really says spring to me. And the other things that say spring to me are the fact that it's getting nice and green, at least all on the way to my house. I noticed how green some of the grass is getting, and there are birds chirping and robins all over the place. So it's kind of exciting to watch spring coming near and feeling a little bit warmer weather most of the days. Another exciting thing that I think you probably already know is that Easter is coming. Today is the Sunday when we would celebrate Palm Sunday. Now our lesson today is not about Palm Sunday, but we did teach a lesson about Palm Sunday on Wednesday. So if you go check out the lessons on YouTube and watch the Sparks lesson for April 1st, you will learn a lot about Palm Sunday. And there's some really fun facts in that lesson. So even if you aren't a kindergarten first or second grader, you might have fun watching that lesson. What we are going to learn today is what happens next in the Gospel of Luke. Remember, last week, we talked about the trials of Jesus. We talked about the Sanhedrin and the Jewish leaders and how they didn't want him around because they were jealous and worried about him taking their power, right? Very selfish and very self-centered of them, right? And then we talked about Pilate and Herod and the Roman Empire and how even though they really knew that Jesus had done nothing wrong, Pilate tried to tell the people many times, I find no fault in him. He's done nothing wrong. I'll punish him and release him. But that didn't happen, did it? Remember our verse that was up there last week? Pilate gave in to who? To the people. Remember, Pilate gave in to the people because the people, now the Jewish leaders were prompting the people and pushing them, but the people, peer pressure, right, picked it up and they started going very strongly against Jesus. And they were saying, crucify him, crucify him, and release Barabbas, crucify Jesus, right? They even chose to have Barabbas, who really was a criminal, released instead of Jesus, who had done nothing wrong. So all that happened in our lesson last week. Now this week, we're going to continue on, and this is where the story starts to get really sad. And we'll talk a little bit more about the sadness, too, as we go on. This is when they start For now, let's look at Luke chapter 23. We're starting with verse 26 today. And it starts with the crucifixion. And it says, As they led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put a cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. So this guy is coming in, and they grab him, and they make him carry a cross behind Jesus too. Wow. Hmm. You know what that does make me think of, though? This man, even though he wasn't really a follower of Jesus, but it made me think about how Jesus tells us that we need to take up our cross and follow him. It kind of gives that picture of seeing this other person And that other person would be us following Jesus by carrying our own cross, right? And that means our own burdens. We have to give up all the (laughs) having it our own way all the time, right? To be able to follow Jesus the way we are supposed to. Including. said to them, 
daughters. Women that never nurse. They will say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if men do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Now, we're not going to go deep into that part because it can get a little bit confusing. But I do want to make sure you understand that Jesus is saying, don't cry for me. Don't cry for me. You need to be crying for yourselves, for the people, the people who don't know me. You need to be crying for the people who are sinning and sinning and sinning and not repenting. So they will never be saved. We need to cry for them. We need to reach out to them. We need to teach them about Jesus because those are the people that will have it way worse if we don't help them get to know who Jesus is and to invite him to be their Savior too. All right. Two other men, hmm, two other men, both criminals. So these guys really are criminals. Remember Barabbas? He's not one of them because he was released. But these are two other men who were tried and convicted and are also going to be crucified. So these two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Now this, this is probably my favorite verse in this whole section because it is so important that we understand it. It's not our verse of the day for whiteboard, but it is a very important verse. Remember, there are criminals on his right and a criminal on his left, and Jesus is being crucified, which, guys, I'm not going to go into the details. Pastor Tim does a little bit in his sermon, but it's a terrible, terrible death. A lot of people have said that have studied it have said it is the worst possible way that a person could have to die. And this is what Jesus is about to face. And do you know what he says? He says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Wow. You guys, forgiving is hard. When people do something to us that isn't very nice or we really feel like they've hurt us in some way, whether they've hurt us by hitting or kicking or biting or whether they've hurt us by hurting our feelings or saying mean things or making other people think badly of us, it's hard to forgive someone when we really are sure that they've done something wrong against us. But here Jesus, as he's being hung on the cross in the most horrible, painful way that could ever be, instead of feeling bad for himself, he is forgiving them. He's forgiving the people who are insulting him, who are being cruel to him, who are hanging him on a cross and saying, Father God, they don't know what they're doing. Wow. So when we're thinking it's kind of hard to forgive someone, we need to remember that Jesus forgave them while they were still doing it. Sometimes we are like, you know what? I, I would like to forgive, but I'm just not ready yet. I just, it's going to take me a while. I'm going to have to do that some other time in my life in the future because I just can't right now. Well, we need to remember that Jesus forgave them while they were still doing it, while they were hurting him, while they were hanging him on a cross. Wow, that is amazing. And that is an example that we want to try to follow. It's very, very hard. 
but it's something that we want to really work on, trying to forgive those who have sinned against us. All right. And then they divided up his clothes by casting lots. That means they wanted his clothes, and so they kind of gambled to see who would get them. This is, he's forgiving them, and they are worried about who's going to get this stuff. Who gets the stuff, right? Oy. So the people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. Remember, these are the religious leaders, the, the ones we talked about last week. They said, eh, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, the chosen one, right? They're like, eh, if he's so great, if he's so powerful, if he's the chosen one, if God really sent him, then he should have the power to just save himself. He should have the power to just take himself right down off the cross, heal all his wounds, and walk right away. Well, you know what? He does have that power. But do you remember that when he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said to God, I would really love it if you would take this cup from me, right? Not make me have to go through this if there was some other way. But he said, but not my will, but yours be done. And he understood that this was the only way for him to be sacrificed, even though he did nothing wrong, so that we could be saved and be with him forever if we choose him. Wow, he understood that. So why, even though he had the power, was he not just taking himself off the cross, healing his wounds, walking away? Because that wasn't the plan. He knew that this had to happen so that we could be saved from our sins. But they didn't get that, did they? The soldiers also came up. So now we have the leaders, the religious leaders are, and now we have the soldiers who came up and they mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, if you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. So they're saying the same thing, aren't they? So all these people are just being mean. And then there was a written notice above him which read, this is the king of the Jews. Now do you think that Pilate put that sign up there so people would understand that Jesus really was the king of the Jews? No. He put that up there making fun of him too. Kind of a, ha, ha, this guy thinks he's the king of the Jews. Ha, ha. Right? So that wasn't nice either. They were all just being cruel and mocking him. They did not understand. Remember when Jesus said they do not know or they know not what they do, right? They did not understand at all. They were not realizing who Jesus really was and that he actually, truly was who he said he was. All right. One of the criminals who hung there, so even one of the criminals who's being crucified too, even he hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself. And us, right? <laughs> so this guy is like, dude, if you're so great, save yourself and, oh, by the way, save me too. So is he thinking about Jesus? No, he's thinking about himself, isn't he? Save yourself and save us too. But he says it in a mean way that, in, that tells us he didn't really believe that Jesus could. But here's a really cool part, and we're getting close to our verse on the whiteboard the other criminal rebuked him. That means the other criminal said to the first criminal, you are so wrong, right? He rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. So the second criminal realizes who Jesus is. The second criminal says, look, we did the bad stuff. We did the crimes. We really are criminals. We deserve what we're getting. But this guy, Jesus, 
He didn't do anything wrong. And yet he's still dying the same way that we are. Wow. That is huge. He didn't even know the gospel, but he was sharing the gospel, right? He was saying, look, Jesus is dying a death he doesn't deserve when he has done nothing wrong ever. He is the perfect, perfect person, yet he's dying, whereas we who do deserve it, we are the ones. And now I'm talking about you and me. Now I'm not talking about the criminals. We are the ones who have done the wrong things. We are the ones who deserve to be punished. But instead of being punished, Jesus died for us to save us from our sins. Wow. And this second criminal, he was realizing this. And this brings us to the very end of our, of our lesson passage we're learning today. And it brings us to our whiteboard verse. So I'll read it to you while you look at the verse. Because remember, you're going to have to help me fill in the blanks in just a moment. Then he said, and remember this is the second criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. Whoa. We're going to fill it in on our whiteboard, and then we're going to talk just a little bit about what that means because, wow, that is exciting stuff for us. Here we go. Let's. All right. Our first, he said, Yes, yes, that's a very important one. Yep, come into your right kingdom. So he is recognizing that Jesus is who he says he is, that he will be going to a kingdom that is greater than any earthly kingdom. And it says, Jesus answered him, right? Now remember, they are on a cross. So they are in terrible, awful pain, yet... They understand that this is important conversation that needs to be had. So even though the criminal's in pain, he wants to ask Jesus, please, Jesus, I realize who you are. Remember me. And Jesus understands how important it is that this criminal, rec under that he wants the criminal to understand that he has now been saved. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. What's the next one? When? Today. Today. You will be yep, with Me, so with Jesus, and we know when, today, with me in where? Paradise. Yes, paradise. All right, nice job. Okay, so. Love the verse, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That. Oh, is such a great verse too. But this is so important, and I chose these verses because this helps us really understand what Jesus 
is offering to us, this gift that he gives us. This criminal didn't know Jesus until now. But even as he's dying, he realizes who Jesus is. He believes in Jesus. He has faith, and he shares that, and he says, Oh, Jesus, remember me. Be with me. I get it. I believe in you. I have faith in you. I know that you are the true Savior. I know that you are going to your godly kingdom, and, and Lord, remember me as you go there. And Jesus tells him the greatest news ever. And the reason I want to make sure that we focus on this is because that news is not just for this criminal. That news is for you and for me and for all the people. Because God created every person in his image. God wants every person to turn to him. But not everyone does. But Jesus is giving this gift to everyone who will accept it. He's saying, look, faith, have faith, believe in me, understand who I am, and want me in your life. And I will gladly give you this gift of eternal life and salvation with me, with Jesus, right? Wow, this guy, he's about to die. Is he going to have time to do all the right things? Is he going to have time to read the Bible? Is he going to have time to learn how to pray and really have a lot of conversations with God? Is he going to have time to go to church? He probably has never been to Sunday school. Is he going to have time to go serve lots of people and do good works? No, he's not going to because he is about to die. So Jesus made clear that what is important is believing in him, having faith in him. Guys, doing all the right things is not, is not what gets us eternal life with Jesus. Believing in him, loving him, having faith in him is what gives us the chance to say, yes, please. I love you, Jesus. I understand who you are. I am a sinner, but you are perfect, and I want to be with you forever. I want you to be in my life. I want to live my life for you because, thankfully, we are not on the cross. We are not about to die. So we do get the chance to live our life while we're here on earth for Jesus. We do get the chance to read the Bible. We do get the chance to pray and talk to him every day. We do get the chance to come to church, to get to know other believers, to help other people get to know Jesus too. We do get to serve others as God would want us to and really make a difference. We get to spend each day doing all that we do even the things like playing and eating, right? Even those things, we do it all for his glory. Wow, this guy, yes, he got to be saved because he did what it takes. He believed, he had faith, he knew who Jesus was, and he asked Jesus. But he's never going to get the chance. He did not get the chance that we get every day. So you guys, if you have accepted Jesus as your Savior, it is an honor and a privilege that we get to live for him. All the good works, all the stuff that we get to do following him that he tells us in the Bible, that is a privilege to us. That is awesome that we get the time to do those things. Wow. So what I am going to ask you today is to really think about what can you do to follow him? Are you taking advantage of all the time he's given you to be able to do those things that will help you be even closer to him? And while you have this extra time at home, most of you have all this extra time, right? 
Are you using that to grow closer to Jesus? Are you using that extra time to be together as a family and pray and play and eat and learn and care all for the glory of God? I sure hope so. And if you haven't yet, today can be the day. And for anyone out there who's like, I'm not sure about all this. I don't know if I really do get this whole thing and believe yet. Come talk to me. You can call me. Have your parents go talk to your parents or have your parents connect you with me. Let's talk about your questions. Let's figure out what you still don't quite understand, what seems confusing to you. Let's talk more about that. Let's invite Jesus to help you learn more so you can get to the place where you can ask him to be your savior. And if you're watching this today and you have thought, wow, I think today is the day. I think today is the day that I want to make that decision and ask Jesus to be my savior. Then definitely go right now and talk to your parents and please have them get a hold of me because that would be so awesome. It would make my day. It would make my life. I love to hear when kids and even growing ups accept Jesus for the first time. All right, guys, that's what I have for you. I do want you to know that we are putting together even more fun stuff. We did our first Zoom chat just on Friday. And so like I think six or seven families hopped on and they were able to see us and we did a story and a learning thing. We're working on putting together one that's just for older kids. So if you're third, fourth, or fifth grade, then we are going to put something together just for you. And um, let's see, we have some other great fun activities. I'm putting together an Easter plan. So stay tuned to make sure you're watching to see what's going on. Because even though we aren't together in person, there is a lot going on. And I may just have some challenges for you, too, that would be super fun. All right, we'll talk to you later. Have a great week. Bye, guys.